So ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to have the privilege of introducing our next keynote speaker coming from a country which is actually one of the official partner countries of the ITB this year, uh, one of the main uh, tourist destinations in the region of Central Asia, Azerbaijan. Uh, the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy is in the process of developing a number of collaborations also with Azerbaijan through the president of our academy, President Konstantinescu. So for many reasons, I'm very happy that the ambassador could be with us here today uh, to share with him, on the one hand, his experiences and perspectives uh, about Azerbaijan, and in particular, the way in which uh, it is presenting itself abroad. So ladies and gentlemen, the lecture topic of the ambassador today is Economic Diversification, Azerbaijan Model of Development. And I'd like to ask you to please join in a very warm welcome for the ambassador of Azerbaijan to Germany, His Excellency, Ambassador Parviz Shabazov. Shabav, Shabav. <laughs> please join me in a very warm welcome. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Mr. Domfried. Dear ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude for being today with you, for being invited here and uh, also um, uh, for holding uh, uh, this statement here. And at the same time, I uh, do believe that my presentation uh, will be another contribution to a better uh, understanding of Azerbaijan's uh, economic potential. It is uh, known that a sustainable rate of economic growth and efficient integration into the global economy are two factors for successful development of any country. The ongoing reforms of policies and structures have enabled Azerbaijan to move towards a more open economy, economy capable of benefiting from the globalization process. After the restoration of sovereignty in 1991, the realization of the state building as well as the organization of national economy based on free market principles became an objective necessity for my country. However, the first years of independence were a serious trial period for Azerbaijan. At the beginning of the 19th, collapse of the Soviet Union the economic, political, and informational blockade of Azerbaijan resulted in a chaos of social economic life of the country. This had several reasons. The breach of existing economic relations among the newly established independent states on the territory of the former Soviet Union, the incompetence of the state political administration of that time, the Armenian aggression against Azerbaijan, which resulted with occupation of 20% of the territory of my country, and over 1 million refugees and internally displaced persons being displaced from their motherlands. The economic picture of this state is more clearly reflected in the macroeconomic indicators of those years. The average GDP decreased at that time by 17% within the three years from 91 to 94. The trend of downturn was particularly observed in the industry. Compared to 1985, the industrial production volume decreased by 50% in 1993. Two thirds of production capacity of the country was almost lost. The inflation rate reached up to approximately 1,800%, the highest limit stage of hyperinflation. The foreign trade turnover decreased by 42% in 1994. The income of population diminished almost six times during the four years beginning from the 1991. I'm just bringing these uh, figures in order to let you know, to understand better in which difficult situation we were for that time. In 1993, just the 1993 big 
became the year of turn in the history of Azerbaijan independence and state building process. Coming to the power by virtue of insistent demand of the people for first of all political stability, experienced politician and mature statesman Heydar Aliyev as a president achieved a ceasefire with Armenia and induced large-scale economic reforms. Within a very short time, financial situation in the country was stabilized. Volume of investments in the economy started to increase year by year. In spite of the ongoing instability and security risks, Azerbaijan sealed in 1994 the contract of the century with the transnational oil companies representing eight countries and started with the huge investment to the oil and gas extraction. Thus, our country made important step towards economic development and integration into the world's economic system and became an energy provider for Europe as well. Addressing the challenges of globalization, Azerbaijan is working hard to develop a non-oil sector, to diversify the economic production and to enhance its competitiveness in international trade and investment. Furthermore, we are developing an adequate institutional infrastructure and capacities pursuing administrative reforms aiming at enhancing the efficiency of public administration, ensuring good governance, and fighting bureaucracy and corruption. The establishment of the state oil fund and the joining of the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative are important endeavors undertaken by the government in order to ensure transparency in oil revenues, collection, and spending. It should be noted that the activity of the state oil fund and the maintenance of transparency in this field are highly valued by influential international organizations. Azerbaijan is the first country getting the full member status among the 26 countries applying for the EITI and having a candidate status. According to the same strategy, the oil and gas revenues are used for several purposes. Development of non-oil sector, small and medium-sized enterprises, regional infrastructure of the country, as well as implementation of measures on poverty reduction and dealing with the refugees and IDPs problems. All these help us in our efforts to improve welfare of population and get solution for other social problems. Furthermore, the revenues are used to increase the intellectual and technological level of economy and to develop human capital. As a result of large-scale reforms among the improvement of national legislation, budget and tax reforms, a reform of the bank system, the implementation of agrarian reforms, the privatization of state property and the creation of favorable business climate, Azerbaijan made within a relatively short time a successful transition from a planned economy system to a liberal market economy. On the different stages of economic development, a number of state programs on the social economic development were initiated and finalized successfully. Some of them are presently going on. The state program on social economic development of the regions of Azerbaijan consisted from two phases and is being fulfilled in order to gain development of separate fields of economy using existing potential of the regions. In order to achieve high productiv productivity, pro produ productivity and increase competitiveness of production in the agriculture, one of the main fields of the Azerbaijan economy, the subsidies are being granted to the various agricultural projects in the rural areas of Azerbaijan. As a result of this state program, over 40,000 new jobs were created since 2004. It was just a result of one state program. The state program on social economic development of Baku City 
and its outskirts is another important step in this direction. Its purpose to construct and reconstruct the infrastructure of Baku and its outskirts, as well as to implement the development projects to improve the ecological situation, to reestablish and develop the social cultural infrastructure objects in conformity with the international standards, to create jobs and to improve the welfare of population. The Baku city, for those who maybe are uh, not uh, good acquainted with uh, the capital of Azerbaijan, was hosting the Eurovision Song Contest, which is very well known, I think, uh, to every one of you. The white city in Baku is the largest ongoing urban development project in Azerbaijan, and not only in Azerbaijan, but in the whole uh, so. Caucasus region. It aims to transform the area into a brand new, high quality urban quarter, acting as a catalyst for the regeneration of the city and the wider region. The all young people are invited to uh, Baku city. The reduction of tax burden and the simplification of tax procedures, the application of the single window principle in the state registration and admission stations of the state border of the country, as well as allocation of preferential credits for entrepreneurship, accelerated the development of private sector. More than more effective mechanism of financing of entrepreneurs investment projects by means of state funds simplified businessmen's access opportunities to financial resources. A joint public-private initiative, ASPROMO, was established in 2003 to increase non-oil foreign direct investment inflow, as well as to stimulate strengthening and expansion of the country's non-oil export capacities. The state oil fund, which manages the oil incomes of Azerbaijan, is a significant investor also for the public infrastructure projects. Azerbaijan is pioneer and regional leader in elimination of regional investment and infrastructure bottlenecks. Establishment of a lasting transport infrastructure is huge contribution to the transnational corridors which connect Caspian Sea, Central Asia, and South Caucasus with Black Sea and Mediterranean Sea. In recent years, we have initiated the creation of a diversified network of oil and gas pipelines. Baku Novorossiysk, Baku Subsa, Baku Tbilisi Jehan oil pipelines, and Baku Tbilisi Erzurum gas pipeline were put into the service to transport hydrocarbon produced in Azerbaijan to world markets. Our energy is now supplied to the world markets in different directions. I'm very glad that these initiatives meet the interests of the region and that regional countries support them. Our activity in the energy sector, of course, secures our national interests, enhances energy secure security and creates new opportunities in this area. Numerous projects on construction and organization of reor reorganization of highways and the restoration and improvement of the road networks in Azerbaijan were carried out. I believe that our initiatives and activities in the transport sector serve our common interests. Azerbaijan takes practical measures to facilitate the operation of the north-south and east-west transit corridors. Construction of Baku Tbilisi Cars Railway line, which provides for construction and rehabilitation of railway lines of Georgia and Turkey, will establish a direct railway connection between Turkey and Azerbaijan. It will accordingly connect Black Sea and Caspian Basin countries to Europe's railway network. Our geographical location empowers Azerbaijan to become a regional transport hub. We have also invested in newly emerging seaports and airports in our land. This, of course, is an excellent opportunity to turn Azerbaijan into a transport sector center. 
Over the past few years, Azerbaijan has been the fastest growing economy in the world. As an oil and gas producing country, we always view the gross domestic product from both energy and non-energy standpoints. Last year, for instance, the non-oil sector grew by 10%. 9% GDP growth was recorded in trade, 16.7% in communication, 5% in transportation, 18% in construction, and 6% in agriculture. Over the last seven to eight years, our economy has grown three times. The poverty rate has dropped from 49 to 7%. The problem of unemployment has been steadily tackled. Of course, there are still unemployed people, but their share is 5.4%. Azerbaijan's foreign debt amounts to only 7% of the GDP. Our strategic currency reserves amounted to 46 billion US dollars, what exceeds the size of the external debt 10 times. As a result of durable development of entrepreneurship, the improvement of business and the investment climate, attracting foreign and, do and domestic investments, the share of private sector in economy of the country became over 80%. We benefit a lot from major foreign investments. The total volume on inv of investments made in our economy since our independence is 142 billion US dollars and approximately half of it are domestic investments. Last year, alone a total of 22 billion US dollars was invested in our economy, of which 9 billion were foreign investments. This shows that Azerbaijan is, attract is attracting for foreign countries, and this is not only due to the oil and gas sector, Fitch ratings gave for the first time an investment rating to our country. Azerbaijan is the only country among Southern Caucasus economies that got an investment rating. It should be noted that today the share of Azerbaijan economy is 75% of the whole Southern Caucasus economy. We are already recognized as a country with a favorable investment environment. The volume of direct foreign investments in Azerbaijan is the highest in the CIS, the Commonwealth of the Independent States Organization. The competitiveness of our economy is growing. According to the Davos Economic Forum, the Azerbaijani economy is ranked 55th in the world and first in the CIS in terms of competitiveness. This is a major achievement for us. It proves that our policy of diversification is paying off. The volume of investments in the oil and gas sector is decreasing because all major projects for the current phase have been completed. However, the investments in the manufacturing sector, in tourism, and services are on the increase. We have channeled the financial, the financial resources fetched by the sale of oil and gas into the real sector economy as well as education. The experience of developed countries shows that it's possible to become a developed country only through technological and educational process. For this reason, we are sending our young people to the leading universities of the world and seeing the benefits of that. The state program intending to support 5,000 young Azerbaijanis studying abroad is certainly a huge contribution to the promotion of future generations and thereupon to our modernization strategy. Of course, the energy sector will continue to dominate 
our economy. This is natural because oil production constitutes about 50 million tons per year. Last year, the gas pr production was close to 30 billion cubic meters. By implementing new projects and attracting investment, we can raise this figure to 50 billion cubic meters. So on, no matter how hard we may try to develop the non-oil economy, energy will always dominate our GDP. We are making a lasting contribution to the European energy security. With the start of natural gas deliveries, Azerbaijan's role as energy partner will increase significantly. Azerbaijan is central actor in construction of the sovereign gas corridor of the EU. The signed agreement with Turkey last year about the TANAP pipeline aims to enable the transport of Azerbaijani natural gas to Europe. Soon it will be decided which European pipeline will transport our natural gas from Turkish border to Europe, TAP or Nabucco West. Azerbaijan will, in coming years, supply Europe with 10 billion cubic meters natural gas from its Shahdanis offshore field in the Caspian Sea. This volume can, without the foreseeable future, be increased till 20 billion. Azerbaijan's social and economic achievements are highly valued by the international organizations too. Azerbaijan was considered the most reformist country for doing business 2009. According to the World Economic Forum survey, Azerbaijan is one of the 20th is on the 20th place in on the 20th place in the world among the 142 states covered on the strength of investor protection. In order to ensure a durable economy of Azerbaijan in the future, we will undertake further measures to develop our human capital, to minimize unemployment and poverty, to increase financial resources from the state budget allocated to social sectors, as well as to improve the social infrastructure and living standards of population sustainably. So I am stopping here. Thank you very much. And in case uh, you have questions, I'm uh, very happy to answer them. Thank you very much. I would like to ask you questions about the um, relations with Armenia, of course, and in Turkish vision, from Turkish vision, what kind of relations, economic relations, or anything you have, and uh, that would be so good to answer. Thank you. Okay. Can I proceed with the answer? Okay. Teşekkür ederim. Aziz kardeşimize. I just also thanked uh, the uh, uh, our friend from Turkey in Azerbaijani language. The two languages are very close to each other, Azerbaijani and Turkish language. If you can speak Turkish language, it means that you can almost speak with a small practice also Azerbaijani uh, uh, the language and vice versa. So um, thank you very much for a uh, very uh, important uh, question. Important because uh, this question, this issue actually, the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, as well as the occupation until today of the 20% of the sovereign ter territory of Azerbaijan and availability of the almost 1 million refugees and internally displaced persons makes make a lot of problems, not only for Azerbaijan, but for a whole region. Armenia has the territorial claim to Azerbaijan, it's clear. But, and there is a, uh, the mediation group consisting of uh, three major powers, so to say, today, United States, France and Russia, members of the 
United Nations Security Council, permanent members of the Security Council, which are trying since 20 years to deal with this conflict, to find a solution to this conflict. Unfortunately, the solution until now has not been fine, found. And the problem here that Armenia does not want to withdraw its occupying forces from the territories of Azerbaijan. So this conflict, of course, is very, uh, very difficult one. It is understandable. Uh, one cannot solve this conflict, you know, uh, through the one or two steps. It should be a process, but this process should be also started somehow. What Azerbaijan actually suggesting is that with the withdrawal of the occupying forces, the military forces, the regular military forces of Armenia from the occupying territories, we can begin the economic cooperation not only with the regions which will be after the occupation uh, in the great need of such a cooperation, but also with Armenia. We will open all our transport communications. We will initiate serious regional projects in this field. And of course, also through the economic cooperation with the communication between uh, the Azerbaijani and Armenian communities, we will come uh, to the certain solution of the conflict. This is the only way how to proceed in this very difficult situation. Unfortunately, up to now, we have made many concessions many proposals, but not yet reached any results. I hope that someday we will actually uh, have uh, some results, what will of course let us to start the economic and regional cooperation. As we talk about economy and economic cooperation in the South Caucasus, I think it is a very topical issue to talk about also the resolution of the conflict because this is the main barrier in the region, you know, for the prosperity, for the development of the whole region. Concerning the position of Turkey, yeah, Turkey recognizing very well this situation has also suggested to uh, make the necessary steps towards Armenia to open the border, to start the economic cooperation, everything in a parallel or after the uh, start of withdrawal of the military forces of Armenia from the territories of Azerbaijan. So this is this can be seen as a one picture. So, and in order to, you know, to uh, finalize this picture, we have to start somewhere. And that's why the withdrawal of the military uh, forces. So the end of the occupation in the 21st century, actually in the uh, European uh, continent, is extremely important and should be done. There are four resolutions of the United Nations Security Council which demand the immediate withdrawal of the Armenian forces from the Azerbaijani territories. They are the uh, resolution of the Council of Europe. There is the resolution of the European Parliament also demanding the same. But unfortunately, the ignorance which we see from the Armenian side, yeah, 
will be somehow ignored also from the uh, European uh, sometimes also community, unfortunately.